Well, I'm Jen Whitfield. I'm the Assistant Head for Academic Professional Track Faculty here in the Math Department, and I'm an Instructional Associate Professor. Uh, I'm also the PI of the EDGE Grant, and the EDGE Grant stands for Enhancing the Design of Gateway Experiences, meaning that we're trying to really look at how can we make large gateway courses here at A&M um, more, more positive for students, um, have them be more successful in those courses, and really ultimately learn more about the content. We had entered into a grant agreement with the mathematics department to redesign math for business and business calculus. In the redesign process, as they researched textbooks and online resources, they found that there were no suitable textbooks and they came back with a proposal to create an online educational resource. We looked at publisher textbooks and found that none of those would really meet the needs when we were changing textbooks. Uh, so we knew we needed to write our own. And using an OER, students would have less costs associated with the class and would have a product that could include features that we, as instructors, would find useful for student learning. And so we all sat around a table there for a little bit just looking at one another going, okay, none of us have written a textbook. How do we begin to approach this. And at that point in time, we were not collaborating with the libraries yet, and so it was really the decision to write the OER that sparked the collaboration with the libraries. And so we reached out, and in the meantime, we decided, okay, we're going to have to figure out how to get started with this. So we, we just started with a course design approach. Let's stop and think intentionally about what do we want the students to truly know be able to do and have it some mind when they're done with the course and that's what we'll build the textbook around. Before we started creating the text, we wrote chapter and section level course objectives and those objectives became the building blocks for every topic that is in our text. We began with a very old school method in our process. We read through a total of nine different currently available OERs and actually printed and cut the parts that we like, taped them together, along with our own thoughts and creations in order to create our first draft. And for us, I think that that ability to go, go old school helped us just as much as the technology did. So we used different resources, including Felder and Brent's Teaching and Learning in STEM to have discussions about what is learning, what does it mean to be learner-centered teachers? We pulled from James Lang's small teaching to have conversations about how to set up the exercises in the OERs, thinking about retrieval, space practice, and interleaving as a way to be intentional in how those exercise sets were set up. Time was probably the biggest resource that we needed, the time to write, edit, read, reflect, and rewrite. Our second most needed resource was the LaTeX editor Overleaf. It's a uh, online collaborative math writing tool uh, and that allowed us to work on the most updated files in uh, the most updated files in real time and especially during the pandemic it has been incredibly useful. At first for each section uh, me and Angie, the other lead author on Calculus for Business and Social Sciences, uh, would work pretty closely on each section individually. Uh, but once we got a, uh, once we got kind of a, a groove going, we would uh, work on sections separately and then trade and edit each other's sections. And then a final pass through for an edit uh, along with uh, not just from us but from other uh, other sources uh, uh, in particular uh, Kendra Kilmer and Jen Whitfield both absolutely necessary for making our book the best that it can be. The math OER project was truly a collaboration involving several units across Texas A&M so the newly formed Office for Student Success, the Mathematics Department, the Center for Teaching Excellence, the libraries, disability resources, all pulled together to support the extremely talented and dedicated faculty who had been assembled to write and create the two math OERs. 
As an instructional consultant at the center, it was my job, my role to provide faculty development, the pedagogical support for the project. The libraries brought an immense amount of just foundational OER knowledge, as none of us knew what we were getting into, as well as helped to curate the content resources for the project. And then Disability Resources is currently working to make sure both of the OERs are accessible for all students, which in the math textbook world is pretty rare. So we're really looking forward to being able to offer that to our students. We went into this not 100% certain we were going to write a textbook. Uh, so once that is in mind, it is helpful to understand that it is, it is quite an undertaking to do so. I think the biggest lesson learned is that if you're going to take on an OER project, you really need to investigate what OER resources are available to you before you create a timeline. When we started the project, we were working under the assumption we would be able to use other calculus OER textbooks to help create ours. And while we did use some content from other OERs, we essentially ended up writing our own textbook. We wanted the concepts and solutions explained in a certain way for our business calculus students. So once we got started writing and typing the book, we just couldn't stop. Creating good open education resources is not something that can be done in a weekend. And if you think you have it perfect, you can guarantee that someone else always has recommendations for how to make it better. I also find it neat that the open resources that we have created, someone else can take and change to fit their teaching style and be used by their students as well. A key component of open education resources is the access and equity that it provides. So as someone who studies student success often, we find that students who are first gen, may come from low income families, often cannot access the textbook materials. When they become open, then it levels the playing field for all students and we see those disparities decrease among grades and retention. The Student Government Association often approaches the provost office with funding requests for open education resources. In one semester, we've seen a three to one return on our investment, and we expect that to grow much more in the years to come.